Hi, welcome to an audio test session with APX. These videos provide worthwhile information for APX users and demonstrations on a range of audio measurement applications. In this session, Dan demonstrates measuring MEMS microphones using the multi-input feature in APX 500 software. Hello, and welcome to this audio test session with APX. In this test session, We'll be looking at testing a pair of MEMS microphones, but we'll be taking advantage of a new feature in APX 500 version 6.0, multi-input, or the ability to have two different inputs, in this case an analog input and a digital input, active simultaneously. To get started, what I have for a physical configuration is an APX 525 analyzer, with a PDM option, and I'm also using our APX1701 transducer test interface, which we'll be using to drive a source speaker, as well as to provide power for our analog measurement microphone. So in my output configuration, I'm going to select transducer interface. I only have one channel active, and I'm going to turn on the power amplifier for that channel. On the input side, I'm also going to select transducer interface. I have only one channel active. I'm going to use it in acoustic mode since we're going to make some acoustic measurements. And I need to provide power for that measurement microphone, which is CCP style or constant current power. Now I happen to be using a TEDS microphone or a microphone with a transducer electronic data sheet and so I can actually read the calibration information directly from the microphone using the calibrate from TEDS button. I'll select read TEDS data and then I'll select set sensitivity and quite conveniently my microphone sensitivity is now set. The next thing I'm going to do on the input side is I'm just going to crank down the bandwidth to 48 kilohertz sample rate or roughly 20 kilohertz bandwidth. Um, in this case, I'm making all my measurements within the range of human hearing, so I don't need to collect data above 20 kilohertz. Now, the last thing I'm going to do uh, in configuring the analog input side is I'm just going to verify my connection. So I'm going to turn on the signal generator and see that I am indeed getting signal back from the speaker inside my test chamber. You can see that in the lower left hand corner in the FFT monitor and I can also see the level that I'm generating. Now since I'm measuring a microphone what I want to do is calibrate my output. So now I'll go back to the output side and I'll go ahead and select acoustic output and I'm going to uh, select this acoustic output level button which will bring me to our set acoustic output level dialog and I'll say I want to set a target of 94 dBSPL and I'll put in a healthy stop value and now the system is going to automatically vary the level of the analog generator until it finds the output that gives me 94 dBSPL or just about one Pascal of sound pressure. So now I have the analog side of my measurements all set up. So now I'm going to go to input 2. This is the new feature in APX 500 version 6. And here I'm going to select PDM. And as soon as I select PDM you'll notice in the lower left hand corner I now have signal monitors for both my analog input on the transducer interface and now on my PDM and I'll just go ahead and turn on the receiver outputs and the VDD so I can see a signal coming back from the PDM microphones I'm actually testing. Now what I'll do is I want to say some actual results from that so I'll go to add primary result and I'll say I want to look at the RMS level result coming back from the PDM input. 
Now right off the bat I have a useful result here since I've gone ahead and set the output to generate 1 Pascal or 94 dBSPL by reference to a measurement microphone and I'm getting minus 26 dBFS from each of the MEMS microphones or minus 26 on one and almost minus 27 on the other I am immediately getting the sensitivity so these microphones their specified sensitivity is uh, minus 26 dBFS per Pascal plus minus 3 dB and I'm getting that result immediately now what I next want to show you is probably the most valuable feature of multi-input which is now what I'm going to do is select add derived result from my analog reference microphone and I'm going to add a sensitivity result the comparison data is going to be the PDM input and I'll add two bars and bar 2 will refer channel 2 of the PDM input to channel 1 of my transducer input and just for ease I'll select a unit of dBFS per Pascal. Now right now you notice that this is exactly the same result as just the discrete RMS level result I got but that's because I've driven the generator to 1 Pascal if I go ahead and change the generator to say 80 dBSPL, you'll notice that the RMS level result has dropped by 14 dB, but the sensitivity result has stayed very roughly the same. And that's because what the sensitivity result is comparing is the ratio between two simultaneous input levels. And this is a very useful feature because very often when we're measuring a microphone, the best and easiest way to measure it is by reference to a measurement microphone. In general, it's much easier to have a measurement microphone than a measurement speaker. Uh, in fact, there is no such thing as a measurement speaker what we can do is we can take a speaker and essentially calibrate it by reference to a measurement microphone. But in the technique that I'm showing right now, what we're doing is we're actually measuring the microphone under test directly by reference to a measurement microphone, essentially dividing the source speaker out of the equation entirely this is just a single point result let's go make some actual measurements I'll go ahead and add my acoustic response measurement and you'll notice that this now has results for both inputs so there's an impulse response for the transducer interface and an impulse response for the PDM interface there are essentially twice as many results one for each input so what I'll do here is I'll put in my desired stimulus level. Now keep in mind at this point I've only calibrated the speaker for its output level at 1 kilohertz. So this is going to give us 94 dBSPL at 1 kilohertz and outside that range we'll just see the speaker's natural response. Let's do a two and a half second sweep and we can go ahead and run the measurement. So here I have the impulse response of my uh, reference microphone. Here is the impulse response of the two PDM microphones. And if I scroll through the results, here is the, I'll say, uncorrected frequency response of the speaker as measured by the measurement microphone. And here is the frequency response of the PDM microphones. Now normally what I would do at this point is equalize the source speaker but again with our new sensitivity result I can do something a little bit more interesting. Again I'll do a derived result 
And again, I will set select sensitivity. And now what we get is the frequency response of the PDM microphones with respect to the measurement microphone. And again, it essentially divides out the effects of the source speaker. So even though the source speaker is not perfectly flat or even very close to flat at 20 hertz or 20 kilohertz, I can clearly see the frequency response of these MEMS microphones, including their cavity resonance uh, up at 15 or 16 kilohertz. Next, what I'll take a look at is transfer function. So we'll start out in transfer function, and in many ways, it's going to be similar to acoustic response. But here, actually, instead of setting a derived result, I'll say that I want to generate the transfer function directly by reference. So the reference now, instead of being the generator, will be an input channel. And I'll say the reference is going to be the transducer interface. I don't need any match because these are both closed loop measurements. Time alignment will be relative to the reference. And let's go ahead and do uh, 48K FFT for one hertz resolution. And let's do 31 averages with 50% overlap. What's interesting about transfer function is two things. The first is that I can get the transfer function in both magnitude and phase. So here we're looking at the magnitude response of the measurement mics with uh, referred to the measurement microphone. But then I can also look at the phase response. So here is the phase of the MEMS microphones relative to my analog reference microphone. Now one thing that's important to look at when you make transfer function measurements is the coherence result. So one way to think about coherence is it's the signal to noise ratio of the measurement itself. And one thing to be aware of is that the speaker doesn't give us perfectly even energy. It has its own frequency response. So particularly at 20 hertz, we can see that the coherence falls below 50%. And that definitely influences the quality of the measurement. But what you can clearly see is, say, between 80 or even 100 hertz, and even somewhat above 10 kilohertz, we have perfect coherence. So the quality of the measurement in this range is very high. Now probably the primary use of transfer function is actually so we can make measurements not using a test signal, but perhaps using music or speech. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll change the waveform type from noise, and I'll select a, a file. I happen to have a collection of IEEE real speech signals. So let's say male model, and we'll do this measurement. And let's fire this off. So here it's interesting looking at the transfer function because we can see the test signal itself doesn't have energy across the full band because it's an actual speech signal. So there's mostly energy in here above 60 hertz and maybe to 8 or 10 kilohertz if we're stretching it. But nonetheless, we can still get a magnitude response and a phase response within the range in which we have good coherence. Anyway, that's a quick look at two topics. Number one, measuring MEMS microphones with acoustic response and transfer function, but especially using our new 
multi-input and sensitivity function in APX 500 version 6. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us for this audio test session with APX. For additional videos, visit ap.com or any of our social media channels.